Hi team, hope you're all good, hope you're all safe and nobody's got the, the cold or the sniffles. Um, this is the first time I've actually added any voice to PowerPoint, so fingers crossed it works. Uh, if you remember, what I said was for you guys during the course of the week to make up your own flashcards on what we've learned about acids so far. If there's anything you're not sure about, then message me. Now, it would be worthwhile attempting as many acids questions as you can. Now, what I'm going to do over the next slide or two is to introduce you to titration calculations. Now, some of the class have already encountered this, but I'm going to start from scratch again as if you've never done this before. So, first things first. What well, actually is a titration? A titration is a really useful technique in chemistry, and it's a very, very accurate technique. It allows us to determine unknown concentrations, and in fifth year you'll find out that we can also determine the mass of substances as well. <clears throat> and there's really not much of a difference. What we need to do though is to react to this unknown concentration with a reactant whose concentration we do know. We call that a standard solution and it's a learning outcome and you need to be quite precise with the definition. So a standard solution is a solution of accurately known concentration. And I've added a, a video for you to watch. So the technique is really very accurate. It uses apparatus where there's a small degree of error. Uh, graduated pipettes and burettes are very accurate. They maybe only have an error margin of plus or minus 0.1 cubic centimetres. Now for the experiment itself, we should always repeat it. And we repeat it so that we end up having a, a value difference of no more than plus or minus 0.2 cubic centimetres. We call this concordancy. And that's the same for higher as well, but when we get to advanced higher, then when we repeat the experiment, the difference is only 0.1 cubic centimetres. Now, the way we record our results is very important. We should record the initial volume. That's what we started at. The final volume, where we ended up at. And the actual volume, which is the difference between them both. So the calculation itself is actually pretty similar to the one that we encountered back in the mole topic. It's a three marker and it's got essentially three main steps. Now remember what we're trying to do is to calculate the concentration of a substance. Now in order to do that, you'll always be given a balanced equation. You'll be given one piece of data, either a concentration or a volume, for one of your reactants. For your other reactant, you'll be given two pieces of data, the concentration and the volume. Now there's a couple of different ways in which this can be laid out. You might have to average your two concordant results first, or that might be given to you. Now, once you've done that, you've got your balanced equation, you've got one reactant with one piece of data, the other reactant with two pieces of data. That's your starting point. Find the chemical that's got both concentration and volume. Step one, calculate the number of moles using N equals C times V. Now remember, volume must be in litres. How do we do that? We divide it by a thousand. Step two is use the number of moles in the mole ratio in the equation to help you calculate the number of moles of the other reactant. So I'll say that again, use the mole ratio in the equation, use the number of moles that you've just calculated from step one in order to calculate the number of moles of the other reactant. We're now on to the final step. What you're now going to do is to calculate the unknown quantity. Now this is usually concentration, but sometimes it might be volume. So you're going to have to rearrange your N equals C times V calculation to either give you C equals N over V or V equals N over C. So finally on to calculation. So a one mole per litre solution of sodium hydroxide was placed in a burette and a titration was carried out to determine the unknown concentration of hydrochloric acid, whose volume was 20 cubic centimetres. Calculate the concentration of the acid. 
Now you can see here that there's a table of results. So the sodium hydroxide was inside the burette and three titrations took place. Now we're only interested in titer 1 and titer 3 because they are concordant. They are within plus or minus 0.2 cubic centimetres. So the first thing is I need to average those. So I'm going to add them both together and divide them by 2. And that gives me a volume of 15.2 cubic centimetres. But remember, I need to now convert that to litres. So I divide that by 1,000. So what I've now got is a concentration and volume for sodium hydroxide. And that's my starting point. So step one, n equals c times v. That's one, because that's the concentration, times 0 0.0152. Remember, that's the average of the two volumes which are concordant divided by a thousand to make them into liters. I'm now going to use the mole ratio and the mole ratio is one to one. Now remember the mole ratio comes from any numbers that you find in front of a formula. Now we're interested in the NaOH sodium hydroxide and HCl hydrochloric acid. Now there's no numbers in front so the concept uh, sorry sorry so the mole ratio is one to one. Well, if the mole ratio is 1 to 1, we now use the actual number of moles that we've calculated for this experiment. So 0 0.0152 moles will react with 0 0.0152 moles. That takes us now on to step 3. So step 3, if you go back to the question, the question said calculate the concentration of the acid. So the formula we now use is C equals N over V. And it's 0 0.0152 divided by 0 0.02. The 0 0.02 because that's the volume of hydrochloric acid in litres. So I've given you some past paper questions for you to try. The only type of question that isn't here that I'm going to give you at some point soon is when the mole ratio isn't 1 to 1. So try these first. The marking schemes are on the SQA website and in Schoology and you can message me about anything that you see in any of these slides. Good luck and do your best.